force more and more for many environmental agents, but especially for electromagnetic fields, there is a strong need for uh, dialogue with the public, uh, because uh, this is very important for the public to understand the physics of uh, this uh, technology and to understand what is known at present. There is a small degree of scientific uncertainty and people are always worried when they don't know the risk. And of course that means that there is a level of public concern. But I want to tell you that from a public health point of view, uh, from uh, the World Health Organization point of view, in terms of radiation, if you were to put this in a thermometer, radon, which is a radioactive gas, we know it's definitely uh, a dangerous physical agent. It's the second leading cause of lung cancer. Ultraviolet radiation, also non-ionizing radiation, we know that it promotes skin cancers. X-ray for ionizing radiation, we know that it is dangerous to your health. Electromagnetic field is at the bottom of this thermometer. We don't see so far any problems at environmental levels. Okay. But what we see is that in terms of public concern, it's completely the opposite. So when we know of a health problem, it is very difficult to interest people into doing something. Most people are going to go to the beach and get a suntan even if they know that you will have skin cancer. They still smoke, and I think in your country there's a lot of smoking going on, but you know the public health impact and the health impact of, of, of this. But when you don't know, is that, that's when we get concerned. So we have developed a handbook that discusses this dialogue that has to be uh, taken between all the parties, the scientists, the government officials, the industry, all this, the general public, the media, and uh, this booklet has been translated in uh, nine or ten languages and is available on our website. Now, in terms of key issues relating to radio frequency games, one is the base stations and the wireless network. The other one is the mobile phones. For this system or technology to work, you need both. You cannot have your mobile phone if you don't have the base station. So we are all clear about this concept. A lot of the concern is around the base stations. Base stations and wireless, net wireless networks, for example, like Wi-Fi or uh, tech stations and so on. Now, we have looked at this carefully um, through some workshops with uh, international experts and we wrote a fact sheet. The fact sheets from WHO are very simple documents. They are three or four pages. You can find them on our website and they describe in public terms, general public or layman terms, our uh, findings. So, uh, we had a fact sheet on this issue in May 2006 and the conclusion was that from all the evidence accumulated so far, we cannot see any short-term or long-term health effects from the base stations. And this is very important because, as you know, in a lot of countries, maybe including yours as well, the most of the concerns comes from the base station. So the few studies that have been published in this area have had some methodological problems and at present there is no conclusive evidence that base station could have a detrimental effect. The reason is that there is very weak exposure to the general population from these antennas. Also there have been no reported health problems from other RF sources including the radio and TV and radars that um, can explain such, uh, such a concern. And if there were a risk, it would be much easier to detect it in studies of mobile telephony because the mobile phone is much closer to the human body than the base station. 
So overall conclusion here is that the exposure from base station is unlikely to be a health risk. And the same applies to wireless networks. Now, the second point is mobile phones, mobile telephony. And in this area, there has been, again, a lot of studies. There have been epidemiological studies, the biggest one of which is called interphone study. It is a study that is being coordinated by WHO, by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, that is part of WHO. It includes 13 countries, and the reason why we are looking at many countries here is because we are trying to identify any links between the use of the mobile phone and head and neck cancers. Because the first question that you ask when you have a mobile phone next to your head, radiating in this uh, uh, vicinity of your head, is what could it do? The first hypothesis is maybe it could induce a cancer. So this was one of the big studies that has been done, looking at whether there is any links between cancer and, um, and mobile phone usage. But because brain and neck cancers are very rare, you need to have a lot of cases to study before you can make a good assessment. So this is why we looked over 13 countries to have enough data so that it would be statistically significant. Um, the study is nearly finished. It should be published hopefully this year. The uh, publications of a number of these, country, of these 13 countries has already uh, come out in the literature. And uh, in terms of human laboratory studies on volunteers, there's been also a lot of endpoints that have been studied regarding uh, the brain function, for <coughs> the physiology, the electrical activity in the brain when you put a mobile phone near it. There have been studies on uh, cognitive effects, that means uh, uh, do you behave or learn differently if you are next to a radio frequency source. There have been studies on sleep and also on subjective sim symptoms. What do I mean by subjective symptoms? This is what we also call uh, electromagnetic hypersensitivity. And for some time, there's a small number of individuals that have reported a variety of health problems that they uh, related to exposure to electromagnetic fields. But after a very uh, thorough review of the literature, it was concluded that such hypersensitivity um, there is no basis to link these symptoms to the, um, to the exposure to the radio frequency field. 